Hey guys, even here, and we got a couple of very interesting topics for this video, but as you can see we are starting with a good Vito physique update post-injury. You guys probably know that he hurt his knee at gas posing, he jumped and he didn't jump properly, and he hurt his ligament I believe, so it's a knee injury, you can see the crutches in the background, and here he is only a day after the injury in the gym posing, looking phenomenal, looking amazing. This photo was posted, I believe, by his sponsor, and they're basically saying that they're not saying anything about him pulling out, about him stopping this prep. They're saying that he's uh, heading towards Europa Pro, as it was originally intended, and Yamamoto Pro, not sure which one, there is one in Italy and one in France, uh, and they're saying this is going to be his uh, pro debut, and they tag Chris Asito, his coach as well, and we all knew that he was supposed to have a pro debut this year in 8-9 uh, weeks at Europa Pro. But now, I mean, we all thought that he was pretty much done. I mean, how will he able to train his legs? I mean, it's not like it's only 3 weeks out so he can just stop training legs. If that was the case, he probably wouldn't lose much in 3 weeks. You guys probably know that Dorian, when he tore his triceps, he was three weeks out of Mr. Olympia and he just didn't train his upper body. I think he trained one side a little bit and he trained his legs very hard and he did cardio and he was still on a diet and he still looked amazing in the end and won the Olympia. And if this was the case with Good Vito, if he was three weeks out, that would be totally fine. I mean, a lot of bodybuilders actually stop training legs two weeks out. Me personally, I stop like 10 days out of a show. Uh, one week out is like mo probably most common. But 9 weeks is a little bit too much, 9 weeks is a lot, I mean he does have very dominant legs and even if he didn't train them for 9 weeks they probably wouldn't look too bad, uh, maybe they wouldn't be as dominant, maybe they would look like, I don't know, let's say Nick Walker's legs, proportionally speaking but I don't know man, it's his best body part pretty much, so I would love to see him at his absolute best, and I'm sure he would like to look his absolute best at his pro debut, so it would probably be smarter to move this, uh, this pro debut to, for example, next year, uh, I mean, if it was like a horrible injury that prevented him from like walking uh, at three weeks out, he definitely couldn't be able to compete, and then it would be truly a disaster because she already did a whole prep and messed it up like three weeks out, but this is like nine weeks out, so he just started the prep, he can now do a little, I don't know, rebound, uh, try to grow his upper body as much as possible, uh, he can grow his back, I think that's, that's one of his biggest body parts, his legs are fine, and compete whenever he is recovered. But we don't know what the doctors told him, maybe we would know if I could, uh, if I understood the uh, Russian, uh, he spoke about something on his stories, maybe he said something about what the doctors told him, if you guys speak Russian you can tell me in the comment section down below what he said, maybe it's gonna be a fast recovery, maybe in like 2-3 weeks he's gonna be ready to train again, his legs, but he's already in the gym and training. He is training his upper body, as you can see, he's training his shoulders, uh, he is not using his legs, uh, I don't know how bad this injury is, if it was really bad, he would probably be in a lot of pain and wouldn't be able to go and train and pose, so I'm guessing it's not that bad, maybe they made it seem like it's this horrible big thing, uh, maybe for publicity sake, I don't know, maybe it's not that bad, it's probably not that bad, I mean, if it was a horrible injury like a quad tear or something like that, he wouldn't be able to, to stand here and to train the way he's training, so I'm sure it's more or less fine. I just don't know if he's gonna be able to train his legs really heavy, really hard uh, in those 9 weeks until the show, but it seems like he's not quitting, as you can see he's training already, and you saw that story yesterday, He was uh, he's still on a diet, and uh, he's posing, and he's looking amazing, so uh, if I was a batting man, I would say he's probably okay, he's probably gonna be recovered in a couple of weeks and be able to train, but let's be realistic, he doesn't have to train super heavy in order to maintain his, his muscle, like he can maintain it probably uh, with doing like 70-60% of what he was doing before, and also, which would probably be the best case scenario if his legs are, if his knee is fine enough for him to do that, 
giant sets, right? I mean, a lot of guys made their legs bigger by doing giant sets, and it's a good way to approach training if you have an injury. Like, you don't have to lift heavy. You just need to do a bunch of sets, like five exercises, 20 reps per, per, per exercise. So, you know, that's a lot of volume. That's a lot of pain, a lot of blood, a lot of pumping, but it's not heavy. It's definitely good for guys with injuries. So if he's already in the gym training and posing, and if his sponsors are saying that he's heading towards Europa Pro and Yamamoto Pro, then he's probably fine. That, he, that probably means he's going to recover um, in time and be able to, to train his legs hard enough to maintain them. And as you can see, he's already training his upper body. So yeah, I believe I'm very optimistic. I believe we're going to see the best version of Goodwito at the Europa Pro as it was promised. I don't know if you guys are training with the giant sets approach, but even if you don't, I mean, if you do, a must is a good intra-workout shake. But even if you don't, it's always a good thing to have an intra-workout during all your training. I personally always have something. Like Milo Charter says, it's better to have a lot of nutrients in your blood than to have empty blood. And this is a great mix for you guys. It's 3-in-1 muscle builder, vintage build, as you can see. It's actually creatine, glutamine and BCAAs, all in one. It tastes delicious, there are so many great flavors, you can choose whichever one you like. You just take one scoop and put it in your shaker and you drink it while you train. It tastes freaking delicious and it's gonna help you recover faster. So guys, if you wanna try it, there is the link down below. Use the code EVAN to get a 15% discount. Thank you guys. Next up, one cooler pro preview. Uh, this is the official list of this show. What a deep lineup, right? So many bodybuilders and so many great names. No, not really. I mean, the, these guys that are doing the show are great, but not too many competitors. I don't know why is this. Even last year, Vancouver was really weak. And I don't know, this probably means this show is going to disappear sometime soon. Because like six bodybuilders, really? And as far as the top guys who can actually win this show, you're probably looking at the two guys that were top three at the previous show, Orlando Pro, and that was Hasan Mustafa with uh, Stan, Stan Imbel, Stan De Long, whatever, I can't pronounce his last name, it's French. Uh, so these two guys are going to be colliding again. Uh, last time we saw them together on a stage, I wouldn't say it was close. I mean, Stan was in better conditioning, he just had a better peak. But this guy is coming from man's physique and classic physique, he's still not to, not on that level, you know. Hassan is arguably one of the biggest bodybuilders today, and even when he's not super shredded, he still beats these guys who are far smaller than him. Uh, but, but, if Hassan brings worse conditioning, which is very possible, and Stan comes in even bigger and fuller, then I'm not so sure who's gonna win this. Considering what Hassan posted, he said this is gonna be his last show this year, I don't know, I, he seems disappointed, I don't know if he's gonna really give it all he's got, and based on the photo that he posted, he doesn't seem like he improved his conditioning much, and I don't know, I, I just, I'm not so sure, but like, is it really these two guys that are gonna be the top two, because we have another entry of this guy that is super genetically blessed, uh, I redlined his name, his name is Prince Boa Bang, if I pronounce that correctly, and uh, he looks like a proper freak, right? He has crazy muscle bellies, uh, take a look at his most muscular, I mean, take a look at the arms, look at the, the, the tricep bellies and the bicep and like the fullness in the chest and the shoulders and like the lines and the conditioning and like he really has those feel heat freaking genetics. I don't know about the legs, the legs as you can see don't look very good, but it's only one pose, it's only most muscular, maybe he didn't flex his legs properly, let's check out the other poses. Side chest also looks pretty phenomenal. I mean, the fullness in the chest and, and the arms and like the shoulders everywhere, really. This guy used to compete in 212, but he made a switch and he definitely made a lot of progress since then because this doesn't look like 212 to me. He looks really freaky, really freaky, and really aesthetic as well. I mean, really beautiful shape, but I don't know about the legs. The legs look really weak. What about the back? It's a good back, it's definitely a good, complete, thick freaking back. It reminds me a little bit of Tonio Burton, right? Do you see it? As far as conditioning, I don't know, I mean, not, not super good, like I don't see any glute separation. Hamstrings are a little bit better, but like not shredded. He's probably gonna look better when he is completely dehydrated, but I don't know, he also like is lacking in the in the hamstring department as well. I would say his legs overall seem weak. Let's check out this video. 
I believe this is like six days out of Vancouver. So as you can see, the upper body like really blessed, really good, uh, really bubbly uh, back, uh, arms, shoulders, uh, chest, really freaking amazing. Uh, but legs, legs look like man's physique legs. Yeah, yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think it's just the video, just the photos. We'll see on stage what it looks like. But yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, he's really gonna be lacking uh, in the leg department. And it's a shame. I hope he's gonna make those legs bigger in the next couple of years because look at this freaking upper body. Very, very complete all around the entire upper body, but like once again, the legs. Maybe it's gonna look a little bit better on stage, but it's gonna look amazing. <laughs> and when he stands next to Hassan, <laughs> I think Hassan's one leg is bigger than these guys both legs. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, but like, once again, very genetically blessed guy, uh, I just need, I would love to see him bring up those legs in the next couple of years, uh, this time around, yeah, I'm not very optimistic because of the legs, but like, if legs were matching his upper body, he would, he would win this show for sure. Now, we got a little physique update of Callum Von Moger, and you probably know, I'm sure all of you guys know what he went through and why he's out of fitness industry why he's out of competitive bodybuilding, but I used to be a big fan of his physique, I really loved what he looked like back in the day, but uh, yeah, I mean, he still looks, I, I can't say good, I mean, I don't know if he's uh, training, I don't know if he's uh, doing anything supplements wise, I don't know if he's eating like a bodybuilder, I doubt it, I doubt that, I think he's doing nothing, zero, I don't believe he's working out, I don't believe he's eating anything like a bodybuilder, he probably gets like 50 grams of protein in, if that much, and um, yeah, I don't think he's using any supplements, so considering all that, which is most likely the scenario, he looks good, <laughs> considering that, but uh, compared to what he looked like back then, not very good, not very good, this guy could have been a good classic physique pro, uh, he, he won a lot of good shows back when he was an amateur in NABA, uh, I know good bodybuilders who competed against him who are still amateurs today, but like good amateurs, top amateurs, and he beat all of them, and he actually turned pro, yeah, but he never had a pro debut, so you know, he would probably do well if he, if he was really focused on making progress, if he was really living the bodybuilding lifestyle fully, if he was focused on improving his weaknesses, he had a few, but he could have fixed them, he could have progressed, he had a lot of potential back in the day, but uh, I guess it's all down the drain. He can still come back, he's not that old, he can still do it if he wanted to, if he was mentally there, but uh, I'm not very optimistic about that. Anyways guys, you can tell me what do you think about Callum's current physique update, or whichever part of this video you found interesting, tell me in the comment section down below whatever your thoughts are, make sure to like the video and to subscribe to this channel for more content like this, and once again guys, if you want to support me and this channel, you can do that by buying any of the old school lab supplements the link is once again down below make sure to use the code even thank you guys so much all the best and bye bye